Hello and welcome to episode one of the Yuha Yupi podcast. No, that is not a stage name. In today's podcast, we're going to be talking about what do you do if you have tight or weak wrists? Pick off with some hot chocolate from Ice Holes. Mm. No, it's actually really good. Okay, so the title of the article is Tight and weak wrists are a common limiting factor with bodyweight exercises, but incorporate these two active mobility exercises that require no equipment and they will be stronger and more flexible than ever. Okay? And then, you know, it talks about a couple other things, uh, whether it's for push-ups, handstands, planche, yoga, or other endless endeavors we have aspirations for, spend enough time on your hands and you'll eventually experience your wrists being a limiting factor in your training. And, okay, so actually before I read that, that actually is kind of point number one. Um, so the answers that I give are coming from the perspective of the functional range systems that uh, I can put a graphic on the TV, or sorry, on this screen, but uh, the functional range systems are used by a bunch of professional sports teams, baseball, basketball, football, maybe UFC. Um, so they're going to be coming from the perspective of this system and it's, and it's, way of thinking uh so it said that if you spend enough time doing something eventually you're going to experience pain in your wrists well that kind of is one of the big differences between the functioning systems and other things uh a lot of systems are based upon trying to acquire the skill and Something that is worth asking yourself is rather than spending 100% of your time trying to acquire the skill, why don't you try and acquire the prerequisite movement that you need for the skill? So for example, if you want to do a push-up, but you can't actively extend your wrist 90 degrees, then you don't have the prerequisite wrist mobility to do a push-up. And if you ignore that, and if you go on YouTube or you follow some random progression on how to do a handstand in three steps, once again, these steps may be great for acquiring the skill, but it may not be the best at acquiring the prerequisite mobility. And the same goes with a lot of other systems or like a lot of other approaches to acquiring a talent. There are people that focus a lot of time on teaching you how to squat with a certain amount of plates on each side hey let's have you bench two plates squat three plates and deadlift four plates but if you're going to squat do you have the prerequisite mobility in your ankles and your knees and your hips um so anyways that was just a side note um so i agree if you do not train to have prerequisite mobility for the activities that you do yeah then you are going to experience a limiting factor in your training the post continues by saying they aren't used to dealing with heavy loads but the good news is they can be built up toward it and well yeah they're not used to it if you don't train it that's not a bad thing it's just it is what it is if you don't do it then you shouldn't expect your body to be able to handle it and then and then it has basically two videos um a palm pulse progression and a back of hand wrist push-up aggression and by the way it's not my position to or i'm not here to say that this person is wrong that this person is putting out bad information because from the looks of it this individual actually is very active in the body weight in the reddit slash body weight fitness community it seems like the tips that he's given uh, have been very well respected. Uh, people really like the things that he gives out. So it's not my position to say that what he's saying is wrong. However, what I am trying to what I am trying to do here is just be another voice and give you a different perspective. 
rather than saying, this person is telling me to do two exercises without knowing the health of my wrist, isn't there value in thinking about it in terms of, is my wrist ready for these two exercises? Because once again, there's no even, there's no, oh, this is a quote, um, I'm going to slightly butcher it from Dr. Andre Ospina, but uh, he says often that there's no such thing as a bad exercise, just a person ill-prepared for such exercise. So everything that he says in this video may end up being very quite well and very effective, but is it is it good for you right now? Are you just coming off of spraining your wrist two times in three months because of wrestling? Did you have like a bike accident and you had to have surgery on your right wrist, but your left wrist is trying to compensate? Like, like where are you coming from? Um, are you a high school basketball athlete that is very active and your wrists are excellent? Are you a gymnast and you just, you can bend your wrist so far? So, uh, depending on where you are on the spectrum of wrist mobility, that kind of will dictate if these exercises are actually the most appropriate for you right now. So if we go through this, uh, how to strengthen wrists for push-ups, handstand, planche, gymnastics, yoga, no equipment needed. And I think actually the, the ideology behind this video is actually great. He's trying to help. Um, he clearly has an ability to teach people because this video has over 30,000 views and a bunch of likes. Um, very well respected. But um, one of the things that he does in this video is he talks about uh, if you want to strengthen your wrists, then you can do palm pu palm pulse progressions. And he wants you to kind of get into this bird dog position with your palms down on the ground and with your fingers, push your fingers up off of the ground and slowly let your palm lower until it touches the ground and pulse up and down. Um, which that may very well work for some people. But what I'm, what I want to tell you is rather than saying, Hey, I'll try this random progression. If your wrists are actually weak, if you actually aren't able, let's just say, for example, if you aren't able to extend your wrists 90 degrees actively, we have to look at, it's worth asking yourself, why can't you do that? Not, Hey, let's do this random exercise, but why can't my wrist do that? Um, so it's worth it. Uh, for this, so obviously if there are injuries that you're dealing with, it'll be worth it to go seek a professional. I'm not telling you that you have to do this stuff. This is not medical advice, but more just trying to stimulate, uh, you to think in a certain way. Um, but like, for example, uh, if you, if your goal partially for this, uh, you know, if your goal is to do a push up or a handstand at the bare minimum bare minimum your wrists should be able to fully extend 90 degrees and very likely even more than that but if they can't do that why don't you just run a simple test and take one hand say you want to assess your left wrist well point your left wrist straight with your fingers pointing towards the ceiling take your opposite hand and put your palm against those fingers and just see how far back you can actually bend that wrist. Can you bend it 45 degrees? Can you bend it 95 degrees? How far can you bend it? And is there any pain? If you are bending your wrist back into extension and you feel pain on the closing angle side, if you feel it where maybe like if you're wearing a, a watch, um, if you feel closing angle pain, then you're probably not ready to be doing this right now. If you're feeling, if you're pushing yourself into that extension and you feel some pain near your wrist, near like the front part, the 
opening angle joint, if you feel pain there, well then once again, you're also not ready for that. If there's opening angle joint pain, then it's worth it to go see a professional about that. But for the podcast, let's just assume that you don't feel pain right now. Um, what you can do is, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say that you can only put yourself through 45 degrees, but your goal is to double that because the prerequisite for doing push-ups and handstands is 90 degrees. So you need to accomplish 90 degrees before you move on to that activity, that handstand. Well, what you can do is you can even go into a, uh, you can go into a bird dog position and straighten your arms, put your palms towards the floor so they're touching and you're, you're like the inside of your elbow is facing away from you and just simply bend and sit back a little bit, just a little bit until you feel a stretch on the front of your forearm. And what you can do there is um, rather than taking you through a progression like in this video that is focusing on concentric and eccentric, we're going to focus on a muscular contraction that is very, very easy on your body to handle. We're going to do something isometric. We're going to do some pails and rails. So what you can do is in that position, when you're on your hands and your knees and your arms are straight out, your palms are touching the ground, you're sitting back until you feel a stretch. You can just sit back there for, say, two minutes. Just hang out, feel the stretch. And then for a 10-second contraction, while your palm is still on the ground, push your palm into the ground for 10 seconds. After that, change the direction. And for 10 seconds, try and pull your palm off of the ground it it is t it it is completely not going to lift off of the ground but that's what i want you to think about and what that's going to do is spending that 10 second push and that 10 second pull after stretching for a few minutes in that position that's going to work to strengthen our tissues at short and long ranges which if we're trying to become more flexible, then we have to push our end ranges of rotation. So you can do that. So two second, sorry, so for two minutes, you just hold a stretch. For 10 seconds, push, 10 seconds, pull. Repeat that three times. So push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. And after that, hang out for another 30 seconds or a minute. Just allow yourself to sit back into that position and try not to contract or push or pull or anything. Just hang out in this newly acquired range of motion and come out of it slowly. I will repeat that. Come out of it slowly. And um, afterwards, you may notice that you have a bit more range of motion temporarily. And what does that mean? Great. That is step one. That is like our first mini session in increasing wrist extension. Um, So if your goal is to have a better handstand position and you have to increase your wrist extension, continue doing that exercise. That exercise that I just talked to you about, uh, the pales rails one, continue to do that. Do that once a day. Do it as often as you can. Do it 10 times a day if you can. Um, you may be able to now do it three times a day. The frequency is not, sorry, trying to do it a, a, a magic number of times per day, like three times per day is not the magic number. Twice per day is not the magic number. Nine times per day is not the magic number. What is the magic number is as often as you can do it. Because the frequency that is required for, say, a child to see results is much lower than the frequency that is required for, say, a middle-aged office worker who hasn't seriously exercised in 
15 years, but but they want to take a CrossFit class or they want to just do uh, a certain home exercise routine that requires them to do a lot of push-ups, those two people require very different frequencies, so there's no magic number for everybody. It's just how often can you do it? Do it as often as you can. So I won't talk about this more. Um, there's definitely great information in this article. If you want to go check out that article, by all means. Um, but what I'm just trying to provide is a different outlook, a different way on looking at things that you may have experienced.